so uh, my name is Ben. I work for Alkira. A little bit more on Alkira at the end. Um, today, I just wanted to throw out sort of some ideas, really, about how we bus back better and, and how we use data. Um, certainly in the context of uh, traffic priority, but also hopefully putting traffic priority measures in, in a wider context in terms of the tools available to local authorities to actually make changes to the network to improve buses. I think it's pretty well established that, that we have a, a, a better working model than we used to in terms of how we think about all the different stakeholders involved in, uh, in, in bus transport, certainly from a, a sort of supplier perspective, if you like, where you, you think about local authorities working with bus operators, working with planners and consultants. Um, I, think, I think we're making good progress on this. And, and, and it's a good starting point to really think about sort of the, the wider system. So buses within a, a multimodal approach to travel, because people don't exclusively travel on buses. They walk, they cycle, they take trains, they take the car. Um, and so we have, to, we have to think about things in context, not just in isolation. And, um, and I think we're also making good progress in terms of thinking about it from a, a citizen and a user perspective. Um, more broadly. Um, but I just wanted to throw out a couple of uh, challenges along the way, really. One is, how well are we using the data that we have got, that we can get our hands on, to actually uh, make better investment decisions? So I guess an example of what I mean by this. We're very good, uh, as humans, at picking up anecdotal information, especially from people who shout the loudest. So bus drivers might say, well, this junction's rubbish. You need to do something about this junction, local authority, please. Um, and that's great. But when you, when you actually look at some of the data that you've got available in terms of traffic flow data, trip data from BODs, whether it's trip data from, from other sources in terms of cars and, and, and cycles and um, even scooters, you, you can start to actually create a much richer context for where the problems are and where they aren't. So it might be that uh, bus users or bus drivers or bus operators are saying certain areas are bad, but actually when you look at the data in, from another angle, actually that might be sort of halfway down the list of the priorities that you might want to spend your money on. So actually taking a step back and, and getting everybody on the same page as to where the problems are in the first place, uh, I, I conjecture, is an important part of this methodology in terms of how we get best value for money in, in, in from our investments. Um, I think there's also an aspect of fire and forget, potentially, when it comes to interventions. We're, we're, good at, we're good at spending money, but we're not necessarily good at continuing to get best value out of the asset that we've built or invested in. Um, and we're not, we're not always um, stringent with ourselves about the monitoring and evaluation side of things. So, you know, we might, we might have invested some money, we might have seen an improvement, that blue dotted line, um, where there's actually quite a significant improvement in average wait time for buses at, at a junction. Um, but what we don't know is in six months' time, does that tail off again? Does that go back up? Does that sort of ameliorate the benefit that we originally you know, thought that we'd get from that, that, that intervention. Um, and we've heard today as well, there's quite a lot of uh, investment and, uh, in more higher frequency data such that you can get down to sort of hour by hour and minute by minute so that you can move some of the optimization potentially into the control room, whereas before it might have been a desk study to look at in the past what happened uh, and then, you know, put, put a report together and say, you should do this, this and this. We can, we can actually move quite a lot of those decisions into the sort of the real time uh, environment rather than the historical. Just wanted to put real time priority in the context of, of other interventions. I think, you know, it's pretty well established what we, what we can and can't do as local authorities spending money on improving the road network. Um, if you take York as an example, um, anyone from York here? If I'm speaking out of turn, let me know. Um, one of the issues that York have 
is they have narrow roads and people are allowed to park on either side of the road on quite a lot of the roads around the city centre. So what you end up with is it's not actually junction problems, it's, com it's, it's road network problems that are causing bus delay. Um, so in, in that context, real-time sort of priority is not going to have the impact that maybe other interventions have. So I think we need a way of looking at where does this sit, where does it sit most appropriately, um, how do we use it in the context of the suite of things that we have available to improve things. Um, and just going back to the, the sort of the monitoring and evaluation point really, um, I think we're quite good at, at sort of reinventing the wheel when it comes to business cases to justify investment and we're not actually that good at building up a library of what we spent money on and, and did it work and how well did it work so that we don't have to do that business case work again. Um, and I think part, part of a sort of bus back better, data driven bus back better method, methodology needs to be around capturing the benefits of what we've actually achieved and not forgetting about them so that we can make better decisions about, well actually in these contexts with these parameters, this is where we need to deploy bus priority. Actually, putting yellow lines on the road in these contexts gives us the most benefit, not bus priority. And I think to, to, to end in terms of this methodology, and, and we've touched on some of this already today, I think there's important other impact questions that we need to be asking when it comes to some of these interventions, and, and particularly around bus priority, is we already know that if we improve, improve the situation for one bus at one junction, it might actually have detrimental impacts for other road users at that junction or further down the line. Um, so we need, to, we need data and we need tools that enable us to look at these trade-offs and make better decisions in real time based on what's happening right now and potentially what we might be predicting in the next sort of few minutes. Um, we also need to think about ha have we made it worse for other modes? You know, are, are, are we actually achieving some of our targets in terms of bus patronage um, through these interventions? Um, or do we need to start thinking a bit more broadly around other technologies and other policy levers that we can pull? So I just wanted to sort of throw out a, a few challenges really. Um, and, and how we're thinking about it from an Alkira perspective. In terms of Alkira, we, we are deep into mobility, deep into data, and, and what we're really interested in is sort of building software and tools that, that can start to look at, you know, actually putting tools in the hands of operators or local authorities to actually be able to enact some of these methodologies. Um, and uh, more than happy to talk about buses and data all day, especially BODs, especially XML. I am a developer, so you know, I have had to work with XML many, many times, uh, and it's, it is quite painful. Um, so yes, a whole, uh, whole bunch of stuff that you're more than welcome to come and talk to me about. Any questions? I think that, that point about data and numeric evidence is really important versus people's perceptions. Mm. I certainly have to deal with where people say, oh, there was two hours of congestion. And what people interpret that was people were stuck for two hours in a queue. Yeah. Actually, when I look at the journey time, it went from four minutes to five minutes yeah. over those two hours. Mm -hmm. You know, that is not a massive you know, a peak time, but the fact that perception is, oh, it's a pure traffic, I mean, in people's minds, it's a problem, exactly. but it might not be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think getting that actual evidence, um, I think Thomas said earlier about who shouts about this, it could be a local councillor saying, that's outrageous that there's queuing traffic there, but actually, that's, that's, it could be okay. Yeah, and I mean, you, you already mentioned that the perception of, of time, while at a standstill versus in transit, is, is, is different. And, you know, we are human beings. We're not, we're not rational decision makers, really. Um, you know, people probably like, we prefer to sit on the bus, charging their phone <laughs> in a warm and dry, and stand at the bus stop, going, where the hell is the bus? Yeah, exactly. I'll add another complexity to that, which is that once you've prioritised using real data, your, your um, list of uh, problem areas um, doesn't mean you've, you've, you've prioritised your list of fixes, because the best way to fix 
biggest problem might not be to address the place where the biggest problem is. Right, exactly. And that's where you need to understand some of the network effects of, you know, uh, where, where you put your interventions and how you tune them and how you monitor them over time. Okay. Cool, thank you. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.